Hi everybody and welcome to another shootout video here at Miriam Pianos. In this video we're going to be talking about Roland's FP90 and comparing it directly to Yamaha's P515, the flagships of both of those uh, companies' respective digital portable lines. We're going to be talking about the action, we're going to be taking a look at the sound and the features and comparing everything that we possibly can. We love doing these types of videos and we're really glad that you've chosen to be here with us today. If it's the first time to the channel, we'd also appreciate if you did subscribe. Helps you stay up to date and it lets us know how much you love what we are doing. Please feel free to leave a comment as well. Uh, we like to hear what you liked about the video and what you didn't like about the video and what we can do better. So without further ado, let's get started on these right away. So here we are with the Roland FP90 and the Yamaha P515. Uh, first thing that we should mention is this is not a perfect apples to apples. The Roland is more expensive than the Yamaha and for that extra money you are getting a whole bunch of extra features. And so it's worth mentioning that this isn't exactly an apples to apples comparison uh, when we're talking about uh, features outside of the piano experience. The Roland has a mic input. The Roland has some really, really beautiful uh, onboard controls like, um, you know, completely editable three band uh, EQ. It has uh, the Bluetooth audio and the Bluetooth MIDI. Uh, it's got, um, it, I think the wattage on the uh, on the FP90 is significantly more uh, than what you get on uh, the uh, Yamaha P515. Uh, so there's a few things that that don't make this exactly a, a, a fair fight. However, when it does come to comparing uh, just the piano experience on its own, uh, I do think it's relevant and. I know that these two instruments are being compared by a lot of people doing the shopping because just using the quick Google suggest, um, the 515 versus the FP90 gets a huge number of searches. And so this is why we're doing the video. Because uh, if you're searching for it, we want to be able to help you answer some of those questions and understand which one of these instruments might be the best, pit, uh, best fit for you. So let's talk about sound first. The Yamaha offers up 256 notes of polyphony, which is certainly ample uh, for the majority of playing situations. Uh, for people who don't know what polyphony means, we've done a video strictly on polyphony, so you can certainly go to the channel, check that out. But uh, the short version is essentially it's the maximum number of notes that a uh, tone engine can produce at one time. That's pretty much it. Uh, on top of the 256 note polyphony, this also has 40 watts of total power, uh, and they are loaded up with uh, several uh, single note samples of some of Yamaha's uh, better acoustic piano sets, like the CFX Grand, as well as the Busendorfer Imperial, because of course, Busendorfer is owned by Yamaha. Uh, and when we listen to them, they've got some really nice renderings of those. So this is the CFX. and the Bosendorfer Imperial. On the Roland side of things, here's their concert piano. Uh, or their ballad piano. Uh, 
there are some really big differences in how these two pianos are generating that piano tone. And that uh, really has nothing to do with all of those extra features like the mic and uh, you know the extra wattage. This is just a tone generator. So Yamaha on the acoustic side is driving off a sample. That means that they have recorded that piano with microphones, each note, and as well as some of the other nuances that go on top of that, like perhaps string resonance, damper resonance. Uh, and those samples are being uh, presented as a single tone when you press it. And so all of that sound is basically coming from a capture of an acoustic sound. And that's, uh, for the most part, how the majority of higher end digital pianos actually work. That's how they function. On the Roland FP90 side, we've got something that's quite a bit different and and rather unique uh, for this price range and for a portable digital instrument. It's using modeling, and which means that rather than uh, the, the tonal source being a sample, this is actually a computer algorithm uh, that's using synthesis. Uh, so that's you know the manipulation of waveforms and all that kind of stuff um, to digitally reproduce that piano tone and all of those extra layers of piano nuance. And so in theory, this actually should give you that much more control over every tiny little aspect of it. And using the Piano Designer app or even getting in uh, to uh, some of the piano editing ability uh, on here, uh, which I think you can, yeah. So the Piano Designer is on here and that's where you get uh, the ability to edit the lid, key noise off, hammer noise, duplex scale, uh, damper resonance, key off resonance, soundboard type, damp it, it's all craziness uh, how many you can um, select. Now you also have the ability to edit quite a few of the same things on the Yamaha, but on the Yamaha side you're actually uh, sort of editing or increasing the volume or decreasing the volume of a sample, whereas here you're actually manipulating um, a basically manipulating a computer program. So uh, it's kind of like live motion uh, you know, movies uh, versus computer graphics. And so you could argue over which one is gonna produce a better image, or in this case, a better sonic image, but this is the difference. Once you move out of the acoustic piano range on the Roland, then you're into their Supernatural engine with 384 polyphony. Can't imagine that ever being used up, but it's there anyway. So those are some big differences and it's really hard for me to say which one is necessarily going to be more enjoyable. Uh, I know that the Roland may be technically more impressive but that doesn't necessarily mean your ear will like it more. Uh, I think there's more opportunities to manipulate the Roland so I'd say there's probably a better chance you'll find something you're going to like but you have to get in front of both of them and just try it yourself. So once again 256, 384, sample bass, and of course when we're just strictly talking about the acoustic piano sound, this is a modeling bass. On the speaker side we're talking about 40 watts, and of course on the Roland side we've got 60, so about 50% more power. Um, if you do want, and I sh I'll, I'll mention this now, uh, to get an even more in-depth review of the Roland, we've done that separately and we've done a number of other comparison videos with the Roland where uh, I am going to dig into some of the other features. I'm not going to do that on with with this one because, like I said at, at first, outside of the piano experience, uh, the Roland sort of has an unfair advantage. So I'm not sure there's a lot of point in, in, in drawing more attention to it than needs to be uh, in this video. Let's listen to some stuff other than acoustic piano. So we've got the e-piano sound over here on the Yamaha. So this is the stage e-piano. here on the Roland. Then we've got some DX.
and vintage. That's their whirly. Listen to a few organs. This is their jazz organ. It's kind of a sample of what they've got there for the organs. Here we are on the Roland. Church organ. Kind of a nice selection on both sides. It's, it looks like maybe a few more organs to choose from on the uh, Roland side. And then of course, uh, when it comes to sheer number of sounds, not precisely uh, a fair fight because we've got the full General MIDI 2 patch um, over on here. And that is just not the case on the Yamaha. It does not have the full General MIDI 2. Uh, at least not available uh, sort of through obvious controls over there. Sometimes these instruments um, actually have kind of secret general MIDI 2 capabilities if you are playing MIDI files through them, um, but they're not accessible. I don't know if that's the case with the Yamaha, but certainly I don't think there's any way for users to access the general MIDI 2. So anyway, hope that gives you a, a kind of a, a decent sense of the types of sounds and, and sort of the differences in the quality of the sound between them. Not sure which one your ear is going to gravitate most towards, but certainly, uh, definitely there's very, very different textures and different timbres uh, that the Roland and the Yamaha are giving you uh, when either when you're comparing the acoustic piano sounds, e-piano sounds, organ, or some of those other sounds. The action on these two should be very similar. Uh, the designs of the action, uh, at least when you're reading through the specs and you're talking or you're you know, reviewing forums and things like that, uh, people have uh, fairly similar comments about them. Uh, and uh, it, in terms of what Yamaha talks about, what your Roland talks about, you should be sitting down to a, a pretty similar tactile experience. That could not be further from the truth. Uh, what you get with the Yamaha, and this is the NWX action, and so it's kind of a wood hybrid-ish uh, type of action, uh, is uh, firstly from a, a textural standpoint, you've got sort of an exaggerated ebony texture on the black key. You have somewhat of a similar texture on the Roland, although uh, the Roland is, is a lot more subtle in terms of its texture. I don't even, you might even be able to see that from the camera. Uh, on the white keys, the Yamaha has almost a polished, a perfectly polished top. I'm not sure why they've done that. It's it's not necessarily the most comfortable because it does make it a little bit difficult uh, to kind of slip on uh, when you need to actually uh, sort of have some finger motion there. Uh, the Roland is uh, has more of a texture there, and you can see it. So this is a more purposeful attempt to look and feel like ivory. So those are the key tops, but then we get into the into the actual motion and the movement of the key. Um, they both are equipped with escapement or let off, and if you don't know what that is, you can sort of have a quick Google of it, and Google, I'm sure, will tell you what let off or escapement is. Uh, but uh, basically, the experience of having let off or escapement is that you feel this 
ridge about two thirds of the way down. That's pretty obvious on the roll and you can sort of feel it there. Uh, it's kind of just like this nubbin that it, it kind of goes over and you're like fum, fum. You don't feel it when you're playing at normal uh, tempos, but it's there to simulate what an acoustic piano feels like. The Yamaha also has it, although it's almost indetectable. Uh, it, and it's, it's less of a, a, a ridge and almost more of a, like it does get a little bit more difficult the closer you get down, but very difficult to tell that it's actually there. That may be a good thing or a bad thing for you because uh, I'm not sure I actually have a preference, but it is worth uh, pointing out that there's a big difference there. And possibly the biggest difference, um, and I just realized this before making the video, uh, and we had was doing a comparison between the 515 and the Kawai ES8, so if you want to check that one out, uh, go find it on the channel. But I realized that my smartphone happens to be very, very close to the proper weight of what, it, or the, the weight that's supposed to put a key in motion. And on an acoustic piano, this is kind of somewhere in between the high 40s to around 60 grams of weight should put a key in motion. Um, and I tried this on the Kawai and I just also tried it on the Roland and realized it's about the same. So I'm gonna set this phone down on top of three white keys on the Roland and I mean, no tricks, just kind of like set it there and then take my hand away. The keys go down. Kind of anywhere, and I suspect it'll get a little bit harder the further go, uh, down I go. And even the bottom three. So, no problem putting the bottom three. Let's try the top three, which is supposed to be the lightest on the Yamaha. they don't even budge. And I didn't need the phone to tell me that. As I'm playing the Yamaha, it's quite obvious, because I'm starting to feel it in my arm even just a little bit, uh, that these, these feel like they're 10 or maybe even 20 grams heavier than what you get on an acoustic grand. I'm not sure why Yamaha made the decision uh, to get the key this heavy. I know that in other models in the past, like the C, uh, CP300, which was like that big, huge stage piano with the two big speakers, that was a really heavy action. Uh, it could just be that their user base is, is used to it or that they uh, find this to be useful. It could be anything. I mean, all of these are subjective musical personal preferences. Um, all I'm doing is simply pointing out the difference, not trying to say which one is uh, better or worse. So we've got a very, very heavy action over here and an action which feels a lot more consistent with what you would normally get on an acoustic piano. They both have the triple sensor, so they are going to be uh, quite responsive, uh, really nice accurate MIDI output, uh, but some interesting differences on the action. So we're going to move on to uh, features and comparisons in that category, uh, but before we do, we'll throw that up on the screen with some specs and keep on moving. So just to wrap up with, with a few other comparisons of features, and I said I wasn't going to drone on about them because um, uh, when we get into some of those other peripheral features, the, the FP90 does have uh, some pretty interesting uh, add-ons and, and accessories that the Yamaha uh, simply doesn't. Um, one of them being a mic input, then there's also uh, the option for an auxiliary input uh, that has uh, independent mic uh, level control. It's got the Bluetooth MIDI as well as the Bluetooth audio. You've got um, the lower and upper parts, which you have the ability uh, to edit from a level standpoint. You've got your onboard EQ. Uh, you've got the general MIDI 2, which we already uh, made mention of. Uh, Yamaha certainly doesn't have nearly as many of those, but it is equipped with the uh, quarter inch, double quarter inches out. It's got the USB connection to the computer. It also has a Bluetooth uh, radio, uh, which is great. Uh, both have the ability to edit the acoustic piano sounds. We've already mentioned that. Uh, and then uh, in terms of cabinetry, they both are available with triple pedals as well as matching stands uh, from Yamaha and Roland. Uh, anybody where these don't have to move around, definitely something that I would uh, recommend for sure. And they both have the ability uh, to record uh, onto USB, which is also uh, really fun. 
although at this point it's so easy to record onto a device or onto a computer um, I have a feeling that might be something that starts to fade away as a feature uh, moving forward but nonetheless uh, you have the ability to do that on both as well so I hope you've enjoyed the comparison this again has been the Yamaha P515 against the Roland FP90 um, not necessarily exactly the same price point, um, but this one's sort of sitting between the FP60 and the FP90 in terms of price. Um, major differences in action, uh, you know, major differences in how that tone is created, sampling versus uh, modeling, um, differences in uh, speaker, uh, maybe not speaker quality, but certainly uh, speaker power, 40 watts uh, versus 60 watts. And uh, as I say all the time, and I've probably said in this video already, do your best to get to a piano store where you can play these two side by side yourself. Um, you know, my thoughts and, and my observations only go so far ultimately before you invest into an instrument like this that you're going to want to love, you're going to want to enjoy, you're going to want to play to death. Uh, spend a good amount of time on that instrument in a store before making that investment. Uh, go in there with a set of headphones and play it for an hour, two hours. Most piano stores are going to love you for doing that. And nobody's going to give you a hard time, and it's always worth the time. Happy shopping. Thanks so much for stopping by for another piano comparison here at Miriam. My name is Stu Harrison, and we will see you back for another video shortly. Right.